question I want to talk about is co-trustees. So can you have multiple trustees? Can you have co-trustees? Can you have two, three, four people be the trustees at the same time? Uh, do you guys ever get that question, Will, Anna? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time, yeah. I say, yeah, can you? Yeah, but should you is a better question to be asking. Right. So let's break this down a little bit. So there, there's a lot of people that I call that are order takers. There are a lot of attorneys, document preparers, that whatever you tell them, they'll do it. And also the legal Zoom world and just the, the do-it-yourself, the fill-in-the-blank world, you can add as many co-trustees as you want, I'm sure, a lot of those places. Mm -hmm. uh, but just because you can, should you? <laughs> I did a live stream for Mont Legal. We had a guest on and she asked, how do I find an estate planning attorney? She was in New York. And I said, you know, she said, what do I need to do to find an estate planning attorney? And I said, well, first make sure that they also practice in the probate and trust administration, that they know how it works after people pass away, because that, that results in better planning, because as a result of our administration and probate experience, we see the messes that come when people name co-trustees, two trustees, three and four. And if these people can't get along during their lives, or I think the idea a lot of people have, and order takers will just do it, is that they take two kids. If there's a um, husband and wife, they each have kids from a prior relationship. They say, hey, you know, let's just name each one of our kids to be in charge of this. Yeah. And that way they can sort out their competing interests by both being in charge of it. Yeah, then they got to figure out together how to sell mom's lake house or whatever it is. It's the family's pride and joy. Half and, of them sell and half of them don't. And, and they're both right. They both could be good options. So as a trustee, you have a fiduciary duty to do what's best for all of the beneficiaries. So there could be a situation where there's you know, a couple of good choices, but what do you do if there's not a tiebreaker? I don't recommend co-trustees in most circumstances. We had a probate, it drug on uh, several years. It, there was three kids, didn't get along, and they were all named as a personal representative. And young Rylas agreed to represent them on the condition that they would all get along and all cooperate. No, it didn't work. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. They all were, you know, I, I thought we could just kind of move, you know, just you know, take the emotion out of it, you know, step one, sell the house, whatever, but, oh man, this has happened a lot. Other state attorneys, I'm sure they get this too. We have family members all in your conference room and they're, and you, you have to just like referee basically. Be nice to your sister, no, don't, nice to your brother. It's like the same thing I do with my kids too. My kids that are ages eight to 13 and these beneficiaries are double my age a lot of times, but I'm having to babysit them. Do you guys have any experience, Will or Anna, with, with co-trustees? Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like I get asked that same question a lot. And a lot of times, you know, the, the, the parents, they're, they're conflicted because they don't want to put one ahead of the other. You know, they just, they love their kids equally and it's tough for them to choose. But, but really, you're doing, I, I like to say that they're doing this for the kids so that, you know, it's less administrative work. So they don't have so many people needing to sign everything. And then one could resign and let the other take over if they're not in a good position to do their job. So let's say they put child A as the first successor trustee and they move to, to Russia or China or something, they could always resign and let number two step in. So yeah, that, that's a great point you bring up, Will, the, the flexibility. Yeah. So good planning is about options. So whenever there are co-trustees, like after someone's passed away, I'll usually present that to them and say, you know what, um, if, if one of you is better suited to manage it, the other one of you can resign. And a lot of times people will end up doing that, you know, just depending on where they're at in life, you know, how much time they have, where they're located geographically, you know, depending on, you know, who's better suited, they'll let the other one take over. Who's less busy might be a deciding factor. Yeah. 